the tale of Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaev, youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II, tragically killed alongside the rest of her family during the Bolshevik Revolution. Russia's last royal family met their end under a cloud of smoke and secrets deep in the Ural Mountains. When their remains were finally pulled from the dirt, a single genetic anomaly in Tsar Nicholas II created a wave of doubt that lasted for years. Modern science has finally taken a second look at those bone fragments, and the results change everything we thought we knew about that night. It is not just about who died in that basement, but why the people in charge were so terrified of the smallest pieces of evidence being left behind. Royalty, under lock and key. By 1917, the family that had ruled Russia for over 300 years was suddenly out of power. Tsar Nicholas II had to step down from his throne, and in an instant, the imperial family became prisoners of the state. Nicholas, his wife Alexandra, and their five children were stripped of everything. They were moved far away to a house in the city of Yekaterinburg. The state called it the House of Special Purpose. It was a normal house for a merchant, but for the royals, it became a cage. The windows were painted white so they could not see out and no one could see in. The family waited in silence as their world slowly turned into a prison. Each day, the rules for the family got stricter. They were not allowed to have their titles or their fine things anymore. Then, before the sun came up on July 17, 1918, everyone in the house was woken up in a hurry. The guards told them they had to go to the basement to be safe because an army was coming to start a fight. Nicholas carried his young son, Alexei, down the stairs because the boy was too weak to walk on his own. The four daughters and four of their loyal workers followed them into a tiny room. It was only about 14 by 17 feet big. It was a tight squeeze for 11 people. They were told to wait for a truck, but instead, men with guns walked into the room. A commander named Yakov Yurovsky read a short paper saying the local leaders had decided to end their lives. The room turned into a mess of noise and smoke. But here is where it gets tricky. Many of the bullets did not work like they were supposed to. They hit the girls and bounced off. The daughters had sewn nearly 15 pounds of diamonds and emeralds into their clothes to hide the family wealth. Those hard stones acted like a shield against the gunfire. The men had to move in close to finish the job while the room filled with screams and dust. When it was finally quiet, 11 bodies were on the floor. At that moment, the men thought they had ended the royal line forever. But the smoke in the room hid a secret no one saw coming. The terror of that night was just the beginning of a massive cover-up. The men who ended the royal family had a huge problem. They had 11 bodies and they needed to make them vanish before the sun came up. If the truth became public, the consequences could start a war that would destroy the new government. The men loaded the bodies onto a truck and drove deep into the woods. Their first plan was to throw everyone into an old mine shaft called the Four Brothers. They thought the pit was deep enough to keep the secret forever. But wait, there is one big problem. When they got there, they realized the shaft was too shallow. Anyone who walked by could look down and see exactly what they had done. The men realized their quick fix was turning into a public disaster. The sun was starting to rise and the men began to panic. They tried to burn the bodies, but they did not have the right tools to turn 11 people into ash. They even tried using acid to melt away the faces so no one could tell who was who. Nothing was working fast enough. In a moment of total fear, the men made a choice to split the group up. They dug one large hole for nine of the bodies, but for the young heir Alexei and one of the daughters, they did something different. They took those two bodies about 75 yards away and tried to destroy them completely with fire and more acid. They buried the small bits of bone in a separate shallow pit. For more than 70 years, those two graves stayed hidden under the forest floor. The men who did it swore to never tell a soul. They went back to the city and told everyone the family had been moved to a safe place. It was a massive lie that lasted for a lifetime. There was no way to prove what happened because DNA had not even been discovered yet. The forest kept the secret while people all over the world started to wonder if one of the children had actually escaped the basement that night. While the world believed a lie, the forest held a dark truth. Hidden beneath the pine needles lay the evidence that science would eventually find. Shadows in the trees. In the 1970s, a man named Alexander Abdonin began to hunt for the truth. 
He was a geologist who worked with rocks, but he was obsessed with finding the royal family. It was very dangerous to look for the Tsar while the Soviet Union was in charge. If the government caught him, he could have been sent to prison or worse. He looked at old maps and spoke to old people who lived in the woods. In 1976, he actually found the main grave with the nine skeletons, but he was too scared to tell anyone. He lived with the weight of the royal secret for over a decade. He kept the location a secret for 15 more years until the old government collapsed in 1991. When the grave was finally opened, scientists found nine skeletons. They were able to use early DNA tests to prove they were the Tsar, the Serena, and three of their daughters. But the two missing children were still gone. This gave life to the most famous story in history. A woman named Anna Anderson claimed for years that she was the Princess Anastasia. People wanted to believe her because it meant the royal family was not totally gone. But in 1994, scientists tested a piece of her skin that had been saved from a surgery. The DNA proved she was just a factory worker from Poland. The myth of the escape was falling apart, but the two children were still missing from the forest. It took until 2007 for the final piece of the puzzle to show up. Amateur historians found a tiny spot in the woods about 75 yards from the first grave. They found 44 tiny bits of bone and some teeth. The remains had been burned so badly that they looked like charcoal. It was clear that the men had tried to erase these two people from existence. These fragments were sent to the best labs in the world to see if anything was left inside them. Nine bodies were found, but the empty space told a different story. The final identification would rely on a rare trait hidden in the Tsar's own blood. The bits of bone from the second grave were in terrible shape. Fire and acid had almost destroyed all the genetic information. But here's the part that nobody talks about. Science had gotten much better since the 1990s. Researchers were able to pull a full genetic profile from the teeth and the small bone fragments. They found mitochondrial DNA that proved the two people were related to the Serena. Then they found nuclear DNA that showed they were the children of the Tsar. They even used a special test to show the boy was the direct male heir. Alexei had finally been found, but there was still one weird detail. Years earlier, when the Tsar's DNA was first tested, scientists found a double DNA trait. This means he had two slightly different types of DNA in his body at once. At first, people thought the test was a mistake. They used it as a reason to say the skeletons might not be the royals. This tiny biological glitch was actually the strongest proof in the case. But during the new study, scientists looked at the DNA of the boy from the second grave. Believe it or not, the boy had the exact same rare double DNA trait as his father. This trait only happens in about one out of every 100 people. Finding it in both the father and the son was impossible to argue with. This discovery proved that every single member of the family died that night. There were no survivors and no escapes, but the reanalysis also showed something about the men who did it. They were so afraid of the young heir that they went to extreme lengths to destroy his body. They did not just bury him, they tried to turn him into nothing. The two separate graves were a calculated move to confuse anyone who might come looking for the truth later on. One tiny speck in the Tsar's blood was about to change history. The truth was finally written in a language that no lie could ever erase. Truth Beyond the Grave The DNA reanalysis performed on the remains found in the Ural Mountains did far more than simply locate the missing children of the Tsar. It peeled back the layered, rotting fabric of a century-old conspiracy to reveal the dark, almost primordial motive behind the chaos. When the Romanov family was led into that claustrophobic, soot-stained basement in 1918, the revolutionaries were not merely looking to execute a political rival or extinguish a failed regime. They were attempting a metaphysical extraction, the surgical removal of the future of an entire dynasty, a bloodline that had held a continent in its grip for 300 years. By treating the young heir's body with a level of frenzied violence that far exceeded the others and concealing his remains in a separate, makeshift grave, the executioners were engaged in a desperate act of historical erasure. They wanted to ensure that no one could ever definitively prove the boy was gone, leaving a permanent, echoing void of doubt that would prevent a royal claimant from ever rising to challenge the new order. They were not just eliminating children, they were eliminating the very concept of the return. 
For nearly 90 years, this calculated plan of silence and shadow almost succeeded. The world was haunted by the ghost of Anastasia, fueled by rumors of survival and the romantic, though tragic, fairy tale of a princess who had somehow slipped through the bayonets and bullets. However, some whisper that the myth of survival was actually encouraged by certain factions of the early Soviet secret police as a psychological weapon, a way to keep monarchist exiles chasing shadows while the real truth was buried beneath layers of lie and deceit. Science eventually caught up to the secrets of the forest and the shadows cast by the Bolsheviks were finally dispelled by the relentless cold light of modern forensic technology. In 2008, after decades of speculation, the government finally acknowledged the undeniable. Every single member of the Romanov family had been identified and accounted for. Yet the definitive nature of this science has birthed even wilder theories among those who refuse to believe the story is closed. There are those who suggest that the 2007 discovery of the two missing children, Alexei and Maria, was too convenient. A sophisticated piece of theater staged by the modern state to finally bury the monarchist sentiment once and for all. This double theory posits that the remains found in the second grave were actually high quality decoys perhaps distant relatives or even political prisoners with similar genetic profiles planted decades ago by the KGB to ensure that if technology ever advanced enough to find them, the truth would be exactly what the state required it to be. Others go further, suggesting that the frantic use of sulfuric acid and fire wasn't just to hide the crime, but was a ritualistic attempt at alchemical erasure. In this view, the revolutionaries believed that the Romanov blood possessed a literal divine power, a sovereign frequency, and that the destruction of the bodies had to be absolute to prevent the very earth of Russia from retaining the family's essence. Remarkably, the very genetic anomalies that were initially expected to complicate the testing ended up being the definitive smoking gun. A rare DNA trait, a specific genetic mutation known as hemophilia B, passed through the maternal line from Queen Victoria became the absolute proof of their identity. This biological signature stood as a silent witness to a night defined by panic, blood, and a frantic attempt to hide a monumental crime. While the executioners tried to incinerate the evidence and dissolve the family's legacy in acid, they could not dissolve the genetic code that bound the children to their ancestors. It is a profound irony that the royal disease which once threatened the stability of the throne became the very thing that verified their deaths a century later. Do you think there are still more secrets hidden in the Tsar's bloodline, or is this case finally closed forever? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's greatest mysteries.